Verimark has reported a 0.8% drop in half rear revenue to uh, 194 million rand. Joining us for more on that company is Mike von Straten, who is CEO of Merrick Verimark. Morning to you, Michael. Uh, the Good language morning. in your in your statement, uh, the word challenge comes up. Uh, issues around pricing. Uh, it sounds like it's been a difficult uh, time. Also, the exchange rate. Before you go into those numbers, just remind us of the model here and and how it works and what you're vulnerable to. I'm aware of you as uh, Alicia. You know the the, the television uh, uh, strong television advertising driven by particular product ranges, uh, mail order kind of model. But you go to the shopping centres and you see the shops as well. Absolutely, a very much pioneer direct response television. That's a longer form commercial that take the viewer from ignorance to a buying decision. Uh, we pioneered that about 22 years ago, uh, but very much took it far beyond that. We actually took those products and put them into retail stores. So the people, instead of only uh, buying it through a call center, they can now buy it at a retail outlet. We also uh, created our own stores, close to 80 today, and we work through about 2,000 stores. The model is really to go and find those innovations and uh, then shoot a TV commercial on them. Uh, and, uh, you know, aggressive advertising, very mockers today uh, in the top five uh, of the television advertisers in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's really the model. That's the model. It's been a bumpy road ahead, uh, you know, for this company to the pit point we find ourselves at today. I mean, I pulled up an interview I did with you uh, back in 2010, and you know, uh, there we highlighted improved operational efficiency, seeing a turnaround in the business to a uh, you know profit-making position. And one of the questions I asked you was to what extent we were looking at the risk of things going wrong, just as quickly as things turned around for you to go completely right. And looking at today's numbers, it seems like we're seeing a bit of a turn back into negative territory here. Uh, we do, but I think, uh, to be fair, it's very mock as a 35-year, usually successful uh, track record. Uh, clearly, it was bumpy the last few years for a number of reasons. I think in this particular case, appreciate that any importing company mm -hmm. would experience serious challenges. I think there is a statistic recently mentioned that the rand was the worst performing currency in the world uh, over the last 12 months. So clearly that has a massive impact on, on a business like ourselves. In fact, the turnaround and profitability, I would say is probably 60, 70% due to the exchange rate uh, dropping uh, between 20 and 25%. Mm. You also talk about two particular products, and I think that's, uh, particularly significant in a company like yours where you focus on particular products. You're not saying come to our shop and look around. Yeah. You're driving it through the product. So what were those products yeah, that yeah. caused the problem? And it, you know, it's clearly uh, uh, confidential information that, but I, I, it was two main performers of our products and it didn't meet the exact specs that we wanted and we had to stop those importation of those products for, for a number of weeks and uh, reactivate, sort out uh, to ensure that they, they do meet our specs. And if that happens to your two top products, obviously we felt the pain. It's something that is very unusual in our business to have experienced, uh, but we feel comfortable that we've overcome that, uh, uh, you know, uh, and given the extra products that will be coming into the business in the next before Christmas, uh, which I think is more than 12, um, you know, we are optimistic. There was also a lot of duplication and cost. Appreciate that we've been outgrowing our infrastructure, your, your reference to the uh, previous interview. Uh, very mock outgrown and it takes a year and a half, two years to build that uh, uh, double the size warehouse uh, and you know that du duplication, we're operating from four sites at this stage, mm. uh, which is clearly a challenge for a relative small business like ours. So where you're uh, needing to focus on operational uh, inefficiencies yet again that you have highlighted yeah. have not yet been eliminated from the business, where's that focus uh, being directed? Yeah, the, uh, you did right, we, we clearly have the challenges continuing with that duplication and cost that distract from our focus, it should obviously to be on product development, yeah. exploring new business opportunities, which we have done. And there is really some exciting things in, in, the, in the pipeline, but we are, we are rather conservative. Let's go one step at a time. Uh, I think we need to, to go, come across this uh, uh, phase that we're in. Uh, and I think the turnovers will, will obviously increase as we move into the, the, the second six months. How uh, do you find yourself exposed to the consumer? You know, uh, your, your model is different to the other retail models yeah. and you have to be sensitive to consumer spending. Mm -hmm. What's your view of how strong the consumer spending is going to be over the next few months? Uh, the advantage is very much work with all the big retail groups in South Africa. And I must tell you, there is some exceptions, but generally things are tough out there. There is no doubt about it. Uh, your question of, uh, is our model, does it get impacted by general economical environment? Uh, less so. I wouldn't say, I mean, the typical example is the rant has badly impacted on us. Uh, but uh, the reality is if you have those new innovations coming in at a pace, uh, as the model is based on direct response television of direct selling, uh, there's less impact, you understand, and finding those, uh, those home runs makes a big difference and uh, it will be less impactful than uh, you know, the, the uh, recessionary 
uh, impact that, that we would feel less so than yeah. a typical retailer. The other thing I wanted to ask is you, there's so many television channels now. You mentioned 22 yes. years ago when you started, there were probably three mm. TV, uh, SABC t channels, yep. Mnet, and the beginnings of the, the, what we now call the bouquet of DSTV. <laughs> There are hundreds of channels now. Um, I must say, I don't see your things anymore. I just don't happen to come across them. Uh, reality, there is so, so much more channels, and it is a, a challenge that the guys overseas are experiencing as well. And you clearly need to, uh, to be on more station more often, and it is a challenge that we, we, we have to deal with. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think we still, you know, the, the, the track record that we have uh, since even the DSTV came online, uh, you can still reach out to consumers. And we, uh, unlike many of the other uh, direct response guys in the world, we're focusing and we're looking where those viewers are. And if it is still on SABC, we will still be there. Uh, and it's a question of continuously uh, analyzing where the demographic sitting, yeah. where is the, where's our target market, and trying to be those. And we do this on a continuous basis. Mike, mm -hmm. before we let you go, just very quickly, something that I picked up was initial resistance to the upward adjustment in selling yeah. prices. Just how much pressure does that put you under yeah. moving forward where the consumer mm -hmm. is resistant to higher prices? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And. Uh, uh, the reality is, is uh, having been in the business for so many years as I have, uh, you find that if you increase your prices, for example, with 10%, your sales actually drop by 20% yep. in that first month, you understand? Now, uh, you know, it obviously levels off as you move away from the price point, but that is the reality. And as we've done our uh, price increases, not on all the products, to be fair, it was more on the older ones that we increase in June, that first two months you definitely feel the pinch, and I think that has also impacted negatively. But it's, uh, what is the worst of the two evils? Do you work at the old prices with less margin, or do you increase it to get it more aligned at the exchange rate, and then uh, the drop and turnover initially? Uh, you know, we, we had to make that call. Uh, our initial advice in the beginning of the year is that the RAND is undervalued and it should improve. But since Marikana and all the things happening around us, uh, the RAND has clearly weakened further, and, uh, and we had to make that price adjustment. Oh, interesting challenge in a very interesting business model. That was Mike van Straten. Thanks, Mike, CEO of Verimark on their results. Uh,